three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion mile trek to Saturn. Space has long been the place of governments and defence. Now, Australian space entrepreneurs are looking to get to the final frontier. Instead of big rockets, they turn to miniature satellites called CubeSats, such as these ones at the University of New South Wales' Space Research Centre. One startup making these are Maitland-based obelisk systems. Uh, CubeSat is a tiny little satellite. Um, they're really, really good at filling in tiny little spaces between big satellites. They're typically about 10 centimetres each side. Um, what that means is, because they fit into these larger systems, um, it means that you can actually get things a lot cheaper. It means that you can do a lot of really, really good science and you don't have to worry about uh, the complexities of having to put something really, really large into orbit. While Obelisk Systems are making CubeSats, Sydney startup CubeRider are looking to make space more attractive and accessible. Run by two young space entrepreneurs, they distribute a STEM program to high school students. What happens is they learn all these critical STEM skills such as coding, data analysis and a lot more. And at the end of the program, at the end of the journey, they actually get to send a software experiment that they've created to the International Space Station on one of these boxes, in one of these boxes. So what happens is you've got this board called the Asimov board that we get the students to learn to code on and then they give us that code and the code will run in an Asimov board on the ISS inside this box. Delta V brings together and gives a leg up to space startups. The man behind the company says now is the time for Australia to invest in space. The, traditionally the space industry in Australia has been a defence industry. We have done a lot of things in the classified world. Now with the world of big data and Internet of Things, suddenly there's a demand for big data solutions, for sensor data. Harvesting sensor data from space makes sense. But right now, we are 100% reliant on overseas suppliers. So we want to have our own capability. Dr. Stephen Freeland of Western Sydney University is handling a federal government review of Australian space law. Space startups feel the law is too restrictive. We have law that's almost 20 years old. And in that 20 year period, the technology of space has ratcheted forward dramatically. And uh, it's the feeling of government that perhaps the law that uh, was put in place in relation to technology in the late 1990s isn't well suited to some of the emerging and developing technologies that uh, perhaps are being utilised by Australians today. We need to have the laws themselves allow even the most independent and, and small scale of companies be able to do what they want without worrying about getting slapped by a, a you know, big government body. For startups trying to access space, things like lowering the cost to actually apply, which at, the, at this point is $10,000 for most startups, that's unfeasible. Um, and I think that's one of the big things. Also, the, the documentation required. So. They do require a lot of documentation for different, for various aspects of, of your entity, um, which if you're a startup, you don't have those documents. Those documents only exist in large corporations and government bodies and things like that. Our law is very sophisticated, but it's not necessarily in touch with what's actually going on in Australia. It works where it works. But the uh, argument, at least, of industry, and that's what this review is seeking to discover, is that it's not entirely appropriate for the types of activities that now are being contemplated. Declan Bowring, Impetus Oz.